of altercation. So that's not the kind of altercation we're going to have. Uh, our weapons are not uh, carnal, but they're mighty. <clears throat> Number four says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds. So we have to understand what our weapons, the weapons of our warfare are. What do you think our weapons are? What do you think our weapons, the weapons of our warfare? What do you think they are? Sword of the Lord. I'm sorry? Sword of the Lord. Sword of the Lord, yes, which is the Word, Word of God. Okay. What are some of the weapons that we utilize when we're fighting these? Prayer. Prayer, absolutely. Prayer. Yes. Fasting, okay. These are things that we use in order for us to be successful in our walk with God. Now, there's a lot of people that start off with this walk and they don't maintain the walk. Why? Because they become defeated. And the place that we become defeated, where do we become defeated? In our minds. In our minds. The battle is in the mind. It's not the physical battle. It's in the mind. If we can conquer the mind and get a mindset of Christ, guess what? We'll never be defeated. Ever. So it's a mindset. So he says, the weapons of our warfare are not common, but a mind through God to the putting down of strongholds. Casting down imaginations. Every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Notice what he said there. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. So the devil is going to attack us where? In our minds. In our minds. So we have to get our minds fortified. And then it goes on to say, and having, number six, and having a readiness to revenge all disobedience and your disobedience is fulfilled. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts himself that he is Christ, let him of himself think this again, that as he is Christ, even so are we Christ. So the weapons are for, of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. Man looks on the outward, but God looks on the heart. Man looks at how we, uh, how we look. Uh, you can, and, and, and people say you can't, you, you shouldn't judge a book by the cover. Well, you know something? That's all we have to judge by. That's all we have to, we have to see is, 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 is what is on the outside. The things that we do and the things that we manifest, that our actions, they tell a lot about, about us as a, as a person. So even though God looks on the heart, that's because he knows the heart. He's God. He knows everything. So it's imperative that we not just look at the outside and judge by the outside, but look at the outside and look deeper than just the outside. Ask questions. How do you find out what's on the inside of a person's mind? Ask questions. The more you ask questions, guess what? The more you'll find out about that particular person. Okay? The more we find out about that person, the more, more that we find out what's on their mind. Let me ask you a question. Us that are parents. How do you find out what your child is thinking? How do you find out? You ask them, what's on your mind? How was your day today? What have you been doing all day? Well, you know, well, that's not a good one. That's not, that is not a good one. Husbands, don't ask your wife, what you been doing all day? That is not a good question to ask. That's a bad one. I tried that several times. It didn't work very good at all. I, I refrained from that. I found out a better question. How was your day, honey? It's a much better question to ask than what have you been doing all day? It's like you ain't been doing nothing. <laughs> no. Husbands, and those of you that may be considering becoming husbands, take it from me. Okay, somebody's been around a long time, been married 40 some year, 46. You're going on 46 years. Okay? The question is not to ask them, what have you been doing all day? Not a good question. It is, how have you been doing today? How was your day today? Better question, okay? And then you'll understand that your weapons won't be carnal, but they'll be 
mighty through God that are pulling down strongholds because why? You've asked a question that they can relate to. Does that make sense? All right. You're not threatening them like you've been sitting around all day doing nothing. That's kind of how that's interpreted. All right. So uh, let's not ask that question. All right. So you won't get this kind of response when they come up. Okay. God looks on the what? Man looks on the. Now, just because this guy is reacting this way, he might be upset because of a justified reason. Now, the scripture tells us that we can be angry, but don't sin. Let not the sun go down on your wrath. So it's okay to be angry, but just don't let the sun go down on your wrath. Okay? And learn to forgive and to... Forget. Everybody says forget. You know something? You may not forget. But you can't forget. Okay? Where is the scripture that where is the scripture that says uh, God told us to forgive and forget? Did he ever tell us to do that? Uh -uh. He told us to forget. But I've never read where he told me to forget. And if you can find that, please let me know. Okay? And I'll change my thought pattern. Alright? But right now I have not read where he told me to forgive and forget, but he did tell me to forgive. And that is what I must do. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, going on. Since the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God, the devil is going to come at us from all factions. He's going to come through us. Well, what are some of the ways the devil tries to get to us? What? I'm sorry? Family. Through your family. Okay. What else? I'm sorry? Temptations. Temptations through various means, uh, you know, through uh, visuals. Okay. That's another way. What else? Health. Our what? Health. Health. He can attack us in our bodies, just like he did who? Who did he attack in his body? Joe. 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 That's right. He attacked Job in his body. He wanted Job to curse God and then die. But Job had integrity and he would not allow himself to succumb to that mentality. See, things are going to happen in his life. We may get sick. We may get, uh, uh, well, we're all going to have problems. And even if, if you don't live for God, if you live for God, you're still going to have problems. The point is, how do we adjust to those problems? What kind of attitude do we have when we're confronted with that problem? Okay. So we want to have the attitude or the perspective of God and what he is teaching us in his word so that when we are confronted with that, we will have the tools and the things that we need in order to confront that effectively and, and we won't uh, give in to the Better than the elements of the world, we won't give in to the temptations of this flesh. Okay? So this you gotta understand, this flesh is this flesh is a monster. It gives us a lot of trouble. You have to understand too that the flesh there are many pleasures that are that are associated with the flesh. Some are good and some are bad. Okay? Not every pleasure is sinful. Although there are many pleasures that are also. Thank God that he's designed and made a, a way that we can enjoy the pleasures of life and not be uh, fall into sin at the same time. Amen? Does that make sense? Okay? We can enjoy. Uh, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example of that. Okay? Now we know that, that uh, uh, outside of marriage, that we not, we're not to engage in a certain illicit behavior. Right? So God has is, God is allowed us to have marriage so that these pleasures can be enjoyed in, in, in a godly way. So he's not taking it away from us. He's putting it in a perspective that is wholesome and that is, is, is godly and that is congruent with his word. So he's not, he's not saying that we can't have pleasure. He's saying that he wants to confined in certain, uh, in, certain, in certain ways so that they are, are in harmony with what he has in his word. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
So, so God is not a God that's. Uh, some people think that God is some kind of God that's he's some kind of tyrant sitting there, you know, this big old, you know, uh, uh, what uh, big old um, sword or big old stick that's going to hit you over the head. That's not the kind of God we have. We serve. Saint John. What's that? Uh, Saint John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. So He, if He loved the world, what does He want to do? Sorry? He does. His son died. Okay, yeah, but his, his son died for us that we can have redemption from sin. Okay? So, uh, St. John 10 and 10. For the thief cometh not forth but to what? Steal. Kill, steal. steal. What else? Destroy. Destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more. So God has wanted us to have abundant life. So he doesn't want us to be sitting around here miserable and look like we're baptized in pickle juice. He wants us to have a smile on our face. What well, if you want to serve him? Listen, let, let me ask you a question. If people came into this building and everybody's sitting up there looking like sour face, <laughs> you think that anybody would want to come there or come here? No, but if, 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 if people come in here and see everybody in, you know, with, with happiness in, the, in their heart, Oops, sorry about that. Happiness in their heart? Okay, a smile on their face? Enjoying the service? You think that people might want to maybe stick around or find out a little bit more about it? Absolutely. He's come that we might have life and that we might have abundant life. And this is basically what people are looking for. They're looking for abundant life. We're talking about fighting the good fight of faith. We're talking about this warfare and see this, if Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy, he wants to take away our happiness. He wants to destroy the happiness that you have. And we've got to fight for this thing. It's not going to come easy. Okay? Listen, when, when, when the people fought for this country, it wasn't easy. A lot of people gave their lives. My brother fought in, uh, he was in the Vietnam War. I have some friends that lost their lives in the Vietnam War. Okay. And then we have uh, some. I had some family members that were over in Afghanistan. Now you think that it's it's easy? No, it's not. So Satan is not going to give us an easy way to walk this walk in Christ. It's going to be tough. You can't be a wimp if you want to be a, a saint of God. You you, you can't be weak meat jellyfish backbone. You've got God. There is, there, there, we, have, we have to have some integrity, we have to have some backbone, and it takes strength to walk this walk with God. It takes strength. You can't just do it, uh, you know, thinking that you can do it down easy street. It's not going to happen that way. So God is looking for uh, us, and see, we have, when we get on our knees, we are most powerful as a, as a people of God when we're on our knees. We're, mo we're, we're, we're the most powerful we're on our knees. This is many times the, the, the last place that we go. Last place. This is going to be the first place to fight. Brother Father, you were in the hospital today. This week? Mm -hmm. You were in the hospital this week, right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no? Yeah? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's get the right answer, okay? Uh, so, guess what? You know, you, you know, uh, uh, you know these, these things, these little devices are good. They can be a, a pain in, in the gluteus maximus, and they can also be good. You know what they did? They text out and let, let us know that he was in that. You know what immediately the brothers started doing? That's right. So these things are good in a sense. We begin to pray immediately for him. And all those prayers are going up. Because we know why? That's the way we fight this fight. Amen. That's the way we fight it. Hallelujah. You don't fight it with guns and knives and sticks and bottles and, yes. and all this stuff. We fight it on our knees. Exactly. And you know something? It's not easy to do that all the time. It's not easy to fight on our knees. We were praying here just a little bit ago. Okay? And I don't want to come to the house of God. And, 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 and when, especially when it comes time to pray, and just kind of 
like it's some kind of drudgery. Oh, here we go again. Oh, it's just, no. Oh, it's just, no, I just, no, it's just so tough. I don't want to be like that. When I come to prayer, I want to engage myself so that God really hears. And you know, when you engage, the time goes by a lot faster than when you're sitting there. It's just kind of... Oh man, it's only two minutes went by. I thought at least five or ten went by. At least. Okay? That's not the kind of fight we need to be fighting. Amen. When we're fighting, we're going to be praying for somebody or something. We have to Hallelujah. be engaged in that prayer. Thank you. Knowing that we're pulling down these strongholds. Great. And it's not easy to pull down the strongholds. We've got to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold to eternal life. Thank you. That can't be easy. Nothing worthwhile comes easy. So we got to fight for our loved ones. Amen? Amen. Those that may not uh, know Jesus Christ and the pardon of their sins. We've got to fight for them. We've got to pray for them. We've got to intercede for them. It's not always easy. Sometimes I don't feel like praying. Sometimes I don't feel like fighting. Guess what? Those are the times I really need to do. I'll tell you one thing. Uh, years ago, uh, I was working in San Francisco at the time, uh, down Market Street, and I left work that day, and I was walking home. I didn't have bus fare. You know how much bus fare was in those days? What, about 25, 50 cents or something like that, 75 cents, somewhere in that neighborhood. I didn't have money to catch the bus. I mean, I was so broke. I was, <laughs> I was broke. I wasn't destitute. I just didn't have any money at that particular time, okay? So uh, I, was, I started walking. I walked from, from 3rd Street. You know where 3rd and Market is? Mission? Okay, I, walked, I started walking from there. I had to walk all the way out to the avenues. Down Mission Street. Yeah, that's a long walk. Tell me about it. And I'm walking that night, and I'm praying. I said, oh, God, please. I'm walking. This is San Francisco at night by myself. And, and as I was walking, I saw a gang of boys uh, up ahead, about a block or two up ahead. I'm saying, oh, Jesus, please, Lord, God, uh, I don't want to have to encounter those guys because I'm by myself and I know I'm toast. So I didn't know it at the time that God woke my brother up. He didn't know what or who he was praying for. My oldest brother appeared before him. And he began to pray and intercede. But it wasn't the oldest, it was the youngest, because I was the youngest. And he was interceding and praying. Don't you know God kept me from that point all the way out to now? I walked out to what, Brazil, you know where Brazil and the states are, Naples and all that stuff. I had to go way out there. Walking up and down the street. And I found out a couple of days later, or a day or so later, that uh, we got to talking. And he said, you know, the Lord woke me up on such and such a night, and I was just praying and praying. I said, such and such a night? What time was it? Such and such a time? That was me! <laughs> you were praying for me, man. I was walking down the street, down San Francisco, and I went down the Mission Street, and there was all these gays and all this stuff that was going on. Man, I was scared out of my wits, and I was just praying, oh, God, please don't let anything happen to me. Please. I got a family. I got some children. And I had to throw that in there just a little bit, you know, just to help God out. <laughs> And guess what? He was interceding for me. He was fighting. That he was fighting a spiritual warfare on my behalf. And I didn't even know it. See, that's what God will do. And we're talking about gifts of the Spirit. We need those gifts. You know why? Those gifts will help us battle this foe right here. It'll help us battle this devil so that we can see people uh, delivered from, from disease, delivered from uh, sicknesses, delivered from blindness, delivered from lameness, delivered from all kinds of uh, problems in our bodies or problems in the mind, for that matter. God is trying to help us to become victorious in this walk with God. He doesn't want us all broken down and beat up. He wants us living an abundant life in Him. Does that make sense? Okay, so this is where, this is the position. 
Now, that doesn't mean that we always have to be on our knees when we're praying. That's a good place to be because it shows uh, that we're honoring God and it shows humility before God. But that's not the only position we can be in when we're praying. But more importantly, our heart needs to be in that position when we pray. When we're fighting the good fight of faith. Amen. When our children are on the school ground, we got to be praying for them. We have some young people that are going to be graduating from high school. We've got to be praying for you. And fighting the good We have to really pray for our children. They're, 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 they are facing things that we never faced when I was in high school. Never. I didn't have a lot of the stuff that they're dealing with. I didn't know. I didn't crack cocaine. I didn't know what that was. I didn't know it existed when I was nine. Weed? Weed? I thought that was stuff that you grow, you know, that you picked out of your yard. You know, weed. You know, you had to clean up the yard. My, daughter, my dad used to tell me, go get the weeds out of, you know, out, of the, uh, out of the yard. I had to go so you have a nice, clean, pretty lawn. Okay, we had to go get the weeds out. That's, that's the kind of weed that I did. But these kids, you say weed, first thing they think about is, you know, smoking a doobie. Is that what they call doobies? Something like that. But anyway, they're they're so they're confronted with a lot more stuff than we're confronted that we were confronted with. So therefore, we have to invest a lot more time in prayer, in fighting for our children. We have to fight for the children. We have to fight for their mind. Listen, the schools are not doing our kids any well. In some instances, they're not doing our kids any justice by uh, giving them uh, worldly and mundane uh, things that are that, that are not conducive to God's word. They're not in harmony or in line with God's word. Let me give you an example. Evolution. We know what evolution means, right? Big Bang Theory, right? Some some. Uh, uh, they had some kind of explosion out there, and all of a sudden, out of that big explosion, and here we got the world, and here we got people, and you know, I guess we came from an ape or a, a, you know, what, a tadpole? And everything came from one thing. Now, what kind of sense does that make? Everything came from one thing. That makes no sense at all. You know why? Because we have so many diversity of different animals and everything else. That, that makes those, but that is what being it is being taught as a fact in the schools. So we have to counteract that. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God, and the word was God. Okay. And then, if we go to the, the book of Genesis, let's go there real quick. First book of the book, book of Genesis. Genesis one and one. It says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Not a big bang. In the beginning, God. You go to try to teach that in school. They'll run you out on a rail. They'll tell you not to teach that kind of stuff. But that is the truth. Evolution is not the truth. Okay? So those are the kind of things that we have to combat that are being taught in our schools to our children as a fact. We have to fight that kind of stuff. And the only way we fight is on our knees. And every now and again we have to go to the school and let them know that uh, our children won't be involved in certain things at the school that are not congruent with the word of God. And we have a right to do that. Okay? We have a right to stand in the gap and stand in our, in, uh, uh, intercede for our children. Okay, that's a God-given right. So we have to really pray. One of the things that we have to do is stand on the promises of God. Stand on the promises of God. The promises of God will help us fight the good fight of faith. The promises of God will help us pull down these strongholds. Where is the battle again? Is where? Mind. In our minds. If we can get the battle in our minds, our, body will, our, our bodies will follow right along with what our minds say. I have a scripture that, uh, that comes to mind. Turn to John 8 and 32. John 8 32. 
You can hold your finger in Jeremiah, but let's turn to John 8, 32. This is something that the enemy does not want us to know. What does that say? John 8, 32. And ye shall know the what? Truth. And what else? The truth shall be what? Make us free or set us free. See, it's only when we understand the truth that we're set free. Lies enslave us. Lies will cause us to be slaves. But it's truth that causes us to be set free. So this is exactly why we have to study the Word of God. Because God gives us truth and we understand truth through His Word. And that's why we have to... Let me give you a challenge. We need to read the Word of God every day. We need to read the Word of God every day. Every day. Every day. Okay? Do you drink water every day? Do you eat every day? Except when you're fasting. And, and what? So you still eat, though. <laughs> <laughs> what are you not eating when you're fasting, generally? Okay? All right? So listen, if, if, if you're not if you're not fasting, then every day we're generally eating. Right? Well, in order to feed our minds, we have to do what? We have to feed it the Word of God. How else are we going to be able to ward off the enemy or put the defenses of the enemy up? Uh, not the enemy up, sorry about that. But uh, put our defenses against the enemy. How are we going to do that? By reading the Word of God. Let me share something with you real quick. Uh, let's go to, just thought just came to me as I was talking here. Let's go to Matthew. Matthew, I think it's in the... First chapter. No, it's actually, I'm sorry. It's Matthew 4. 4. Matthew 4. Matthew 4th four. chapter. Beginning at the first word. Matthew 4 and 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hunger. And when the tempter came, oh, he we were talking about a little earlier, he, temptations. And that's why he's called the tempter, because he's, he brings temptation to us. The tempter came, and he said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written. Now, where did Satan attack Jesus? Where did he attack him? In his senses. In his senses. In his flesh. Senses. In his flesh. Jesus had gotten through fasting how many days? Forty, 40 days and forty nights. You think he was a little bit hungry? I think he was a lot hungry. So what did the enemy do? He attacked him at a weak and a vulnerable point. Make sense? Yeah. Weak and vulnerable. That is where he's going to attack us. But what is it that Jesus used and did in order for him to have the victory when Satan came and attacked him? That way? What did he do? He used the word of God. And what did he do? He said, it is written. In other words, there's no way we can know the word of God if we don't read the word of God. That's why it's so important to have Bible studies. That's why it's so important to be in the house of God. That's why it's so important to be in uh, Sunday Bible school, all these different areas that we... And it's also important, it's very important for you to have your own personal study at home. Hallelujah. Amen? Amen. You've got to read the Word of God. Even if sometimes this flesh may not want you to read the Word of God. Sometimes you may not feel like reading the Word of God. Those are the times that I really need to do it. Okay? And what does that take? What does that take? 
when I know I should do it and I don't feel like doing it? What does it take? Discipline. It takes discipline. Okay? To live for God, it takes a discipline to do that. You don't live for God just by osmosis or just you know, laissez-faire. It takes discipline to live for God. So the first thing he did is he attacked him. And, uh, but Jesus came right back, even though he was hungry, even though, even though his body was weak. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Then the devil come at him again. Now don't you think, or do, do, you, do you believe that the devil, once he attacks you once, he's going to go away and say, uh, I'm going to go on vacation? Absolutely not. He's going to attack us maybe in a different way, in a different method. Okay? And we have to be on guard for those methods and those different ways that he's going to attack us. So then he says, then the devil take him, number five, then the devil take him up into the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from it, for it is written, uh-oh, it is written. What did he use here? It is written. What did he try to use? The word. Okay. He tried to use the word. Okay? You have to be careful sometimes. Some people will try to use the word. But notice here what he leaves off and up. If thou be the Son of God, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. Okay? Well, he didn't really quote the entire scripture. He only quoted a part of it. Okay? And see, when the devil, what the devil will do when he does that, he won't quote the whole word. He'll only quote part of the word. See, a half lie is what? A lie. See, the truth or it isn't. You can't tell a half lie and think that it's going to be a half lie. A half lie? No, it's either a lie or it isn't. It can't be a half lie, a quarter lie, or a third lie. I'm sorry? Or a white lie. A white lie, no, well. <laughs> white lie, that's a little bit better than a black lie? Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> They're all lies. So... So, uh, a lie is a lie, right? So, if it's not truth, it's a lie. So, what he did, he tried to mingle. Listen, if I give you a plate and put some arsenic in it, I may not have to put it in the, all the food, but eventually it's going to permeate throughout that food. And you eat it, guess what? You're going to die. You don't have to have a lot of arsenic to kill you. You just have to have enough. And that's what Satan does. He makes sure he puts enough in there to either discourage you, to cause you to try to have be, uh, uh, be in fear, doubt. Doubt is a big killer. Okay? Let's see that uh, that's a good so, so he appealed to the Lord's what? What did he appeal to here? Notice what he said. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. What did he appeal to here? He appealed to his... He wanted him to bow down or cast himself down because it was written. You, you, you have to understand, Satan is a master deceiver. We have to be very careful that we're not deceived by the things that he does and the things that he says. For it is written, Jesus came back. Again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now, notice here. Who was Satan tempting? Jesus. Say, uh, Jesus Christ turns right around and says, thou shalt not tempt who? The Lord thy God. Wow. Revelation? Revelation? Okay. You're not supposed to be tempting God, so therefore Satan was trying to tempt who? Jesus Christ, who is God manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. Then he goes on to say, 
It is written, Thou shalt not chip the Lord thy God. And again, listen, the devil doesn't give up. He doesn't give up. He's going to come back at us, at us again and again. You, sometimes we're going to think, that doesn't he ever give up? No, he doesn't. He's not going to give up. And guess what? We can't give up either. Right. We're going to fight until the day we die. And again, the devil taking him up into exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And he said unto him, All these things will I give thee. Wow. All these, notice this. Satan is telling Jesus, All these things I'm going to give you. All these things I'm going to give you if thou wilt fall down and do what? Worship the devil. We do have some worship, the devil worshipers. Did you know that? The wickeds, they worship the devil. Okay? So Satan has some disciples out there also. And they're working for him uh, just as vehemently as we're working for, for God. Then says Jesus unto him, Get thee, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, What? Does Jesus Christ fight Satan with every single time? Word. The Word of God. That's how important the Word of God is. That's how important it is for us to know and understand the Word of God. You're talking about a weapon. This is our weapon against the enemy. Understanding and knowing the Word of God. And, and just to know the Word of God, we've got to tell the devil, it is written, Satan. And sometimes we might have to talk to him just like that. It is written. Amen. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. It is written. Great peace of day which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. It is written. Thou art not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. It is written that my sins are forgiven because of God. Well, you did this and you did that. and you, He's going to come at us. He's going to tell us all the nasty and dirty things that we've done. But guess what? It is written. If I confess my sins, he's faithful and just to forgive me. And the blood of Jesus Christ shall cleanse me from all unrighteousness. It is written. And we have to constantly and consistently speak the word of God against him. It is written. Hallelujah. It is written. It is written. It is written. And the thing that he... No, notice that once Jesus Christ gave him a scripture that it is written, he came a different route. He came to something else. Then Jesus Christ said, it is written. He came to something else. And he said, it is written. After that time, he says, let's find out. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. So we're going to be fighting. We're going to be fighting the good fight of faith. We're going to be fighting this enemy, this, 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 this devil. And it's all in the mind. He's going to attack us in our minds. And that's why we need to fortify our minds. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty. You know what mighty is? You remember, I don't know if you, you, you young people probably don't remember this. We used to have a, a cartoon called Mighty Mouse. You remember, remember that? Mighty Mouse, he'd fly around there with his little cape on. He's a little bitty mouse, a little bitty thing, but he was, he was mighty. He'd get these big cats and he'd you know, swing them around by the tail and throw them down there. And, he, and the little bitty mice would be running around and they would say, Mighty Mouse! And then here you go, know, the mighty mouse comes in and flies in, and he, you know, dethrones the, the big cats and the little cats and everybody, you know, all the other cats that are running after the little mice. Okay? He was mighty mouse, and that's what we have. We have a mighty God. And that's why, so we're, we're uh, uh, he says here that, that we're putting down, but mighty through God, and notice how the might is, is through God and not of ourselves and then of, of ourselves. To the pulling down of strongholds. You have to understand the devil will try to build and try to set up strongholds. And we have to fight against that. I don't know what a stronghold is. In the old days when they used to fight uh, like England and all the, uh, the uh, gladiator days, they used to have what's called stronghold. That means that even ISIS has a stronghold. That's where the, 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 the strongest, the, the, the most... Uh, forceful. 
they're in that particular area, that's a stronghold. They have more might in that particular area than anywhere else. That's a stronghold. And in order to get rid of that stronghold, you've got to be pretty tough. You have to send the, uh, the, the SEAL team or the SWAT team or, you know, one of these, these guys that are really tough and they, you know, they eat nails for breakfast and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> these are tough guys. Really tough guys, okay? Those are the ones you got to send in, okay? Now, when Satan comes to my door and knocks on it, you know what I do? I tell Jesus to go answer the door. I'm not going to answer. I know I'm, 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 I'm no match for that fellow. How long has Satan been at this thing? He's been at it for centuries. He's mastered it. He knows what my weaknesses are. He knows how to get to me. He knows how to rub me the wrong way. So in order for me to be victorious in this thing, I have to send somebody that's mighty than him. And that's Jesus. So when Satan knocks on my door, it is written, send the word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was send the word to the door of your mind. When thoughts come in that are not godly, some thoughts come in that are, uh, that are trying to uh, cause fear or anxiety or all these things that come that try to discourage us from walking with God. Right? Send the word to that enemy. It is written, Satan. When your wife gets on your nerves, when your husband gets on your nerves, it is written, Satan. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Okay? You got to take that word. Okay? It is written. Your children. Okay? It is written, fathers provoke not your children to wrath. It is written. If they provoke you. That's only if they provoke you. Okay? If they don't provoke you, you're good. It is written. Okay? So when we get angry and the person cuts you off on the, on, on the freeway, it is written, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing uh, shall avail them. them. Yes. It is written. I gotta fight that enemy with the word. If I try to fight it any other way, guess what? I'm gonna lose. So it's the word of God. It's God's word. It keeps me. It says every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every what? Thought to the obedience of Christ. Every thought. To the obedience of Christ. The Christian, the Christian, the enemy of, of every Christian is Satan. And it is our thoughts are the battle. Let's turn to Psalms. Um, let's go to Psalm 1914. Psalms 19 and 14. What does that say, Psalm 1914? Let the words of my what? Mouth. And the what? Meditation of my heart be what? Except on the God which is, which is my what? In other words, our, in other words, let our thought, the meditation of our hearts, are our thoughts. Let our thoughts be conformable. Let our thoughts be made in the image of God. It said, "Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ." It also talked about putting on the mind of Christ. So when we put on the mind of Christ, we're putting on Christ. In other words, we want our thoughts in harmony and in, in, in congruent with the Word of God. Meditation of our hearts, or in other words, the, our thought life should be acceptable to God. We want our thought life to be acceptable to God. Let's turn to another scripture here. Um, John, 1 John 4 and 18. 1 John 4 and 18.
First John 4 and 18. Anybody have that? What does it say? There is no fear in love. There is no fear in love. Perfect love casts out fear. Perfect, perfect love casts out fear. So what is something that the enemy uses to try to paralyze us? Fear. Fear. Sometimes we'll want to speak to a person. Maybe the Spirit of the Lord tells us, go say something to that person. Go share with that person. Fear paralyzes. What, what are they going to think? What are they going to say? Uh, gee, let me ask you a question. Would the devil ever tell you to pray for somebody? Never. Ever. If the if a voice comes to you and tells you to pray for somebody, you can guarantee that's not from the devil. Guarantee. Because the devil is never going to tell you to pray. Because he understands that this is a war, this is a weapon against him. He understands that. He knows that. He's not going to tell you to pray. I'm sorry? Only his followers. I don't think he's going to tell them to pray either. They to pray to him. Well, pray Oh, pray against us. Yeah, well, that, 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 that's not going to work. The greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Okay? So that ain't going to work. So, so our, the weapons of our warfare are, and you know something? The gifts of the Spirit can also be weapons of our warfare. Gifts of the tongue, gifts of healing. What does that do? That sets people free. That sets people free. So we can understand that God's Word is so vitally important. Uh, that's why it's so important that we teach, preach, uh, treach, that's the word, treach, uh, the word of God, so that and that, that, that we have to read the word of God each and every day of our lives. Let's get to the promises before we close tonight. I said we go to Jeremiah 29 and 11. Let's go to Jeremiah 29 and 11 very quickly. So when the devil comes, guess what? We take a promise that God has given us. And that's how we fight him. We fight him with the promises of God, which are found in his word. This is the middle. The mind, the ideas, the desires, the drive, the Lord, and the energy. In the middle is where we're going to have our biggest challenge. We can start off, a lot of people when they start off with God, they're excited, they're jumping up and down, and you know, just, oh, I just love the Lord. And all but uh, along the way, along the way, in the middle is where we become attacked. A lot of people fall by the wayside. But if our mind is fortified, if the, our ideas and our intelligence is centered around God. If our desire is for God and about God, if our drive, you see, we have to have drive, we have to have uh, energy, or we have to have that intestinal fortitude to keep on going. If we don't have the drive to keep going, you won't go. So we have to have the drive. We also, and along with all these, we have to have the Lord. God is going to be the one that's going to help us through our this is a journey. This is a journey. And guess what? 
Along this journey, there's going to be some ups and downs. There are going to be some hills and there are going to be some valleys. There are going to be some good times and there are going to be some bad times. And how we approach it, how we, how we uh, allow it to, to be a part of our thinking will determine how well we come through this. So it's not so much stuff is going to happen, but stuff is going to happen. It's not so much the stuff that happens. It's our attitude when the stuff happens. What kind of attitude would that? What kind of mental, how do we mentally prepare for these things? What's going to happen next week? Anybody know? No, you don't. I don't. I don't know what I'm going to be confronted with. So therefore, I have to mentally prepare myself that God, whatever happens, I'm going to trust you. So that's mentally uh, calculated in my mind. I've mentally put that in my mind, the resources of my mind. So that in regardless of what happens, if I, if I get sick, you know, if, if, if something happens to one of my family, or even something happens to me, guess what? My mind is set that regardless of what happens, I want to trust God. And then I have to have the energy to keep going. So everything is going to happen in the middle. If I can just fortify myself in these particular areas, guess what? Victory is mine. We're assured victory through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now it's not me that does it, but it's the Lord. That's why you have to have the Lord in all of this. Our minds. Promise for God. You know what it takes? It takes work to live for God. How do you know that? It takes work. You gotta have to be willing. You gotta be obedient. You gotta have the right attitude. You gotta have the right attitude. And you gotta show some kindness. And these are some of the things that we've been working on in Sunday school. We had a list of things, faith and, and temperance and other, uh, uh, other items that we're working on. Each week we're working on something. So these are some things that takes it takes work. If you're not willing to work, you can't be lazy and be a child of God. Not live successfully. God does not for lazy. When God chose his disciples, who did he choose? Who did he choose? Men that were working. Peter and they, they were out fishing with their uh, 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 John and, and his brother James were fishing with their, their father Zebedee. And so Jesus comes along and calls them. He called uh, Matthew. He called uh, 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 Thomas and all the rest of the, uh, uh, the, the apostles. But they were men that were working. They were doing something. He didn't call, he didn't call anybody that was lazy. I didn't even think Judas, his carrier, was lazy. He was doing something. You know, maybe he was stealing from people because he <laughs> or lying or something else he was doing. What do you mean he was doing? He was working, doing something. Might not have been kosher, but he was doing something. So God didn't choose lazy people. Consider the ant. You sluggard. Okay? Where he's working in toilet. He didn't, they don't have a leader, but yet still they're, they're, they're putting things together and uh, put, store it up. Okay, that's the last of that right there. Anybody have any questions? Any questions? So we're going to fight the good fight of faith every day of our lives. Okay? This week is, is, is no different than last week or the week before. It's called Fight Week. Anybody see the Pacquiao and uh, what is it? Uh, what is that? Uh, May Mayweather, doesn't it? Okay. That's what they need to fight in the century or whatever. They have to prepare for that battle. Did you know that? They had to go through a lot. They had to work. A lot of stuff they had to go through in preparation for that. So we have to prepare for the battles that we're going to fight. You know what our preparation is? This is our preparation. Every morning, get up. Pray. Every morning, get a scripture. Just read a scripture. You guys been writing the scriptures I've been sending out? Okay? Yeah. Every morning, a scripture, something that will fortify us against the enemy. Because he's out to destroy us. He's out to uh, steal, kill, and destroy. And we're not going to let him do that. Amen? We're going to fight the good fight of faith. We're going to hold to eternal life. We're not going to let the devil destroy our kids, destroy our children. 
for the fight for our children. How important is it to us? Is it important? Are our children valuable to us? Are our family members valuable to us? If it's important, guess what? We're going to do something about it. If there's an intrinsic value to it, if it's valuable, if it's important, if it means something to me, then I'm going to put some action to it. Amen? Amen. Let's continue to pray. Those of you streaming in live, hopefully it's something that's been said to help you to live a godly life and live a life that is pleasing and also to live a life that is, uh, that is victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen? And that's what it's all about. It's not about me. It's not about you know anything that I've got in material things. It's about living for Jesus and not only that, what can I do that's going to be a blessing to others? I'll leave this off with you in a song that goes like this. It says, uh, to live for God is all I want to do. To live for God is what I desire to do. To live for God is all I want to do because it pleases God. Amen? All I want to do is live for God. God bless you. In Jesus' name. All right, let's stand. Um, and, and let's, anybody have a special request before we dismiss time? pray for those that are sick and afflicted in their bodies. We pray, God, that you'll touch them today and the crown of the head and the soles of the feet. Those that you need be to be encouraged, we ask you, God, to encourage them. And let us be a vessel that is used according to your will to bless others, not only that, to be blessed ourselves. Father, let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart let it be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And we do ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs>